Hello, welcome. Thank you for taking a part of your day to make this a part of your day, to take some time to focus in on the Word of God. Today we're gonna to look at a passage in 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse five. And this is a passage that helps us understand what Jesus as the light is all about. Starting in verse five, John says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. When you read through the Gospel of John, it seems like one of John's favorite words is the word light. He doesn't just use it in uh, the letter we just read. He also uses it in his Gospel. But you notice here he says they got this teaching directly from Jesus. In John chapter 3, when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus said, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. John saw God as light. They were the same thing. And looking at this passage that we've just read, it's like John has sort of drawn a circle with God in the center of it. He saw God as that source of light in the middle of everything else. I think about a, an advent wreath with the Christ candle in the center. And God's light has filled that circle. It's covered the darkness and even stretches out beyond that circle. But then John said that everyone in the dark is invited to come into the center of that circle. We're all invited to come to God at the center. Think about this, the first manifestation of God is light. In Genesis chapter one and verse three, where God said, let there be light and there was light. You know, the first thing created after the heavens and the earth was light. And before light was created, the Bible says that the earth was without form or void. So this hopeless world was introduced to light. And once that light had covered the chaos, then creation could begin. In John chapter one and verses four and five, speaking of Jesus, the Bible says, in him was life and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. You have that comparison again, to light shining in the darkness or the world and the darkness not understanding it. Think about what people saw when Jesus came to earth. As their eyes were opened, they could actually see his glory. And the Bible says that that glory was the glory of God the Father in heaven, and that that glory was filled with grace and truth. Almost from the very beginning, evil or darkness has tried to overshadow the light, but it hasn't succeeded. And even when Jesus was on the cross, evil thought that light could be turned off, but when it tried, it actually made that light brighter. So it's like a victory shout of the Bible that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. But on the other side of that coin, we have darkness. And anytime the Bible says that people are walking in darkness, it's talking about sin. Because sin is what separates us from God. In verse six, what we read, John said, if anyone says that they have fellowship with God and they're habitually sinning, or they're living in sin, that person is actually a liar. And that means both in the things that they say and in the things that they do. He used that word walk, which means to habitually do something. It's something 
Uh, it's not just done by accident. This isn't something that you did and later thought, wow, I shouldn't have done that. This is something that you're doing habitually as a lifestyle. I mean, every Christian is going to temporarily step into the darkness at some point. But we're going to be miserable until we get back into that light. John's teaching a simple lesson here. That the first step that any person has to take toward God is to admit that they're a sinner. To actually say what I'm doing is wrong. That's the, that's the first step. In, in VBS, we teach the children the ABCs and the A is admit that you're a sinner. Too many people don't want to admit that what they're doing is wrong. Some of you will remember the evangelist Jim Baker. He and his wife Tammy Faye Baker, they had this ministry together. and They committed a crime and Jim went to prison for it. And when Jim got out of prison, he wrote his autobiography and he called it, I Was Wrong. Can you imagine that? Naming the, the story of your life, I was wrong. Well, he knew what he did was wrong and he admitted it. But the Bible says that anyone who refuses to admit their guilt is making a choice to stay in the dark. And I want you to notice in this passage that we read in 1 John, the word is sin and not sins. Sin is a part of our nature. Sins, plural, are the result of that nature. And in verse 10, John made the most serious statement about the way we describe our sin. He said that anyone who says they're not sinning is calling God a liar. Because in Romans 3.23, the Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So a person who is deceived enough to believe that they have no sin just cannot comprehend the truth of God. John's given us an invitation here in verse 9. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Back in verse 7, using that word walk, implying something we do habitually, John said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So someone who's formed that habit of walking in the light has a radical change in their lifestyle. They're not compatible with the darkness in the way they live their life. And we see here that not only do we have fellowship with God, but he also has fellowship with us. And in verse 9 that we read, John tells us what to do about our sin, uh, the sin in our lives. Instead of worrying about it, he says we need to confess it. Now, unbelievers are called to believe and confess that sin. And Christians, we're already believers. So when we confess that sin, we're agreeing with God about our sin. But because of that, that confession, the Bible says that God will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So John's talking here about the forgiveness that we get after we confess that sin. When we confess that sin and believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior and accept Him as Lord, we get into that circle that I was talking about. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. In fact, sometimes we all wander out to the edge of that circle and temporarily step into the darkness. But we know that the way back to the center of that circle is the forgiveness of God that's been extended through Jesus Christ. Listen, I hope today that you know that forgiveness, that you've been given the, the understanding that God loves you, He wants to forgive you, and if you've never received that forgiveness, why not do that today? Through Jesus Christ, your life can change. You can come into the center of that circle. You can be a child of God. And if that doesn't describe you, why not make that change right now? I'm going to pray for you. And as we're praying, let God speak to your heart in a special way. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for the blessing of knowing that we're in the center of that circle. The light of God is guiding our lives. Lord, I'm thankful today for, for that hope that we have of forgiveness. And I pray for those today who've never received that forgiveness, that you would speak to their lives and and move them in a way that would lead them into that circle. 
into that light of God through Jesus Christ. I give you the glory for it. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.